Welcome to the review of the Sherman electric unicycle. Too heavy. Oh my goodness. Better take that. An instruction manual. Wow. That's incredibly utilitarian, I would have said. Woo! <laughs> we got two charge ports. It comes with a five amp charger. So what do I make of it so far? Okay, well the body feels very plasticky. So it does feel plasticky. If you're wondering in the pictures, is this some sort of thick rubberized material? It is not, it is plastic. It's hard to describe. It doesn't feel like premium plastic. It's hard to tell sometimes because this sort of stuff can take an absolute knock and no problems whatsoever. And I've seen some big crashes out there on this when people have been testing it and it survived. So I'm not gonna pass judgment on it so far, but if you're wondering if there's any rubberized finished on it, it's not, it's just solid plastic, got a nice little design across there. I mean, first impressions are, it just looks an absolute beast. One thing to check, which I usually do look at, is the alignment of the body against the wheel and it's even both sides. So it's been at least built properly that way. And it's got a level, a level body. Front light unit held on by Allen keys by the looks of it. Each side of a bracket to which you can then disconnect by a 3.5 mil jack, it looks like. Uh, so that's just a modular design. So you wanna replace the front light unit, just pull that off, replace it. How epic is that? I like that, I do like that. That's a neat little design. I've kind of glossed over, and it's the same with the back, by the way, 3.5 mil jack with a light unit. So just Allen key bolts, undo it. Reminds me, it's just come to mind, is a Series 1 Land Rover. And from there on out, all the Land Rovers, it's a bit like that, isn't it? It's like a utilitarian type thing. Um, one thing I haven't pointed out and mentioned is the obvious, which is the metal bar that runs around the outside of this wheel. Now it follows all the way underneath the leg support pillars, which hold the foot plates on. Um, so it actually runs right underneath. I like that. That's good. So that clamps on in there. So it runs through. Wow. Okay. So it does truly form. I was going to say a circle. It doesn't because it doesn't complete it but it goes up through and it's fitted to both pillars. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't um, come past the side here, so this is gonna take a slide if it hits the road and obviously the bottom of the foot plate, but it will catch, um, will catch this before anything else, even the top. Have I got anything to lay across the top, I wonder? So to emphasize it, as you can see, it's not fouling this bar if it landed on its head. <laughs> um, in a straight line anyway, if it lad dead even, um, if it doesn't, it's down dead even, it's going to hit that first and that first. So that's pretty neat. Well, we've got a LCD panel here on top, which is a feature set which we've never seen before. So this has been added on. You've got all different adjustability you can do on here without an app. Hooray! Um, and you've got to say, fair play to them. Not only have you got the LCD panel, You've got the bar around the outside, which we haven't seen before, the Mad Max look kind of thing. And then we've got a modular front light, modular rear light. And so they've brought all this in to their first wheel that they brought out. So fair play to them. Um, pretty awesome so far, and I haven't ridden it yet. There's a slight rocking back and forth. You, you won't be able to see it on camera. I can kind of feel it through the wheel um, before there's any movement. It's not loose on the, um, on the axle or anything like that. You've got a tiny little play between the fore and back, minute. Um, so I'm only mentioning it, it's nothing to worry about, but it's tiny and I can't really display it on the camera without the wheel moving. So this tire is absolutely massive, isn't it? <laughs> Beast of a thing, proper off-road tire. Uh, you've got the rear light here and you've got the front light. You can turn that on with the push of a button. Like it. There we go. Very, very bright from what I can see so far in the studio. You can also turn off the rear light if you want by pressing the power button, and then you can turn it back on again. No problems. Okay, I suppose, oh, trolley handle, one press, drops up that much, and then you've got all that height there. But you press it down, and then it's sprung at the very last bit. Push it in, job done. Okay, I guess what I'm gonna do now is go out on the road on it, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it's heavy. Ah. 
Okay, there's no midpoint. So you're walking down with this. So this is tilt back adjustment, 12, 14, 17, so it goes up in increments. Look at this. It goes 280 kilometers an hour. That's impressive. It doesn't really, of course. now done 155 kilometers on this wheel and it's been quite an experience I must say so where do we start I am very pleasantly surprised for a brand new group of people to break away and produce a first wheel I'm gonna be very upfront about this they have done a brilliant job they've done really really well so I, I literally left this building going, please don't cut out, please don't cut out, please don't cut out, because it's brand new. You have no idea. There's no history, nothing. So I set off very gingerly and my confidence grew. So after about 10 miles, I was thinking, this thing is absolutely solid. And for the last 155 kilometers, it's performed flawlessly. Now this 155 kilometers is massively more than we'd usually ever do for an unboxing review. And of course that's in part because it's got 3,200 watt hours of batteries in the old girl. Um, so first things to note before we go any further with any more specifications or anything like that, let's start off with the fact that with this model, because we had to air freight it over, we had the batteries split out separately um, for the dangerous goods side of the clearance, etc. Fitting those gave me the opportunity to have a look inside. When I opened it up, basically there's no nonsense in there. That's what struck me. It's the fact that usually when we service wheels and things like that, we've got light rings running around the edge and they've got their own wiring loom built in. Uh, they've got the, obviously those individual components of the covers to go over. Then sometimes you have boards, circuit boards put in, driver boards and things like that all over the place or neatly bunched together, but nonetheless all wired in. This was a case of putting the two battery packs which are joined together up in the side, connecting the cable up, two cables, but connecting the cables up, rooting them through and plugging them into the board. That was it. There's no other nonsense in there. There's just the bolts that hold it on. And so straight away I was thinking, this is so, so basic to work on. Even down to the front headlight unit and the rear headlight unit. The fact that, okay, so you come off and it's exposed there because there's bars here, you smash this into the ground, right? Okay, well, don't come off um, is one of them. Uh, but these things happen. An Allen key bolt and an Allen key bolt and a 3.5 mil jack. Unplug it and you can just buy another unit, stick it on. It's literally no more than two minute job. Boom, boom, remove. 
So from a servicing point of view, I was blown away when it suddenly dawned on me. I was like, actually, wow. I don't, need to un I don't need to uncover anything to pull out all the wiring loom and then rewire it all back in, feed it through things. Perhaps sometimes you have to move the battery packs out to get behind to get the wiring. There's all sorts of weird things that go on across all different models, different manufacturers. That's epic. I could just unplug it and change it. Very rare um, to do it. But for instance, like the Monster, the Gotti Monster, the one that we had for the last leg of the 1000 miler, Rich, who kindly sold it to me, um, it dipped forward whilst he was on it and it smashed the front, and it's damaged the front headline, so that was stuck on on the 1000 miler to stop it dropping forward. Nothing inherently wrong with that or difficult up until this point when something like this comes along. So to do that monster headlight, I'd have had to strip the unit, like the entire body shell, split it down the middle, separate it out, then replace, because it hooks into left and right shell, unhook it, then follow all the wiring back, pull it all back out again, then feed it all back through again, and put it all back together and build it. Well, <laughs> If that happened on the 1000 miler, for example, with this wheel, I dropped it, broke the light. Okay, dropped, broke the light. You just literally phone back to the warehouse and say, can you send one out to this address and we could just bolt it on. It's just incredible. And even then, if you could find another light in a shop somewhere with a 3.5 mil jack, um, same voltage specification, you could bolt it onto the top of this bar in the emergency. So that alone needed its own breakdown to try and bring up how brilliant that is in terms of uh, maintenance and servicing and things like that. So this whole thing is very basic. If you've got concerns, you've got hardly any tools and you're not confident with breaking open electronics, then this could be an option for you um, because there's not really a lot to it. You've got your batteries. You're probably never going to open up the side panels. If you want to replace the side panels, you can remove them. You just see in the video, it's a little bit of a tug to actually get them out but you can remove them without taking the foot plates off. That in itself saves a load of hassle with taking the grub screws out this side, that side, tapping the bar out, pulling the bar out, taking the washers out, etc., and taking the foot plate off, putting all the stuff down by the side. You don't have to. Zip, 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 same tool, you pull it off. Big thumbs up there. So that was a realization when I was riding along actually. So after doing the batteries, I was thinking of some great thought because I've got a bit of a problem here, if I'm totally honest, with this wheel. And the problem is that I think it's probably one of the best wheels I've ever ridden. For me, if those of you know me, that's a massive statement that I will reluctantly say because you're thinking, I spent my time on this wheel, so for the last 155 kilometers, thinking, what's wrong with it? Let's now find some points which I can actually bring up to try and be as open and honest as possible. And there isn't any. Um, the only ones are the obvious. It's net's weight is 35 kilograms, 40 kilograms when it comes to the box, but 35 kilograms as it is now as it sits. So it's heavy um, and it's expensive. So it's heavy and expensive. Both those things you don't get into accidentally. If you're looking for a wheel, it can be frustrating sometimes when you get a wheel and you think, oh, I just wish I had known this X, Y, Z which is why we try and be open and honest with the reviews, so everyone knows exactly where they're at. Um, so you can't fall into those accidentally. You know it's gonna be a big heavy wheel because it's got massive batteries and it's a big heavy wheel and the price is the price. And so you know those two things on the outset. So if you purchase, you know, they don't, don't come to us as a surprise, do they, those two things? So I did spend a long time, and that's many hours of riding, <laughs> of, thinking, where can I pick out the faults? Now, I thought that the tire on the road wouldn't be that great. I thought it might be a bit like a Z10 to get the thing to lean over. You really have to put a lot of effort in and change your riding style to adapt to it, specifically that, and mess around with PSIs. I took this out of the box and I rode it, and I haven't been on a wheel that's rolled into corners like this thing before on all terrains. So it was the road, the gravel, it's just lovely. <laughs> it's just lovely. Um, and going to the point of it being heavy, this is where a disadvantage come in. I would say that if they start shifting models with smaller batteries to bring the price point down to address those two issues, weight and price, I wouldn't go for it because my gut instinct is the weight is really, really helping with the handling. And you get a similar thing with the monsters that we did here. And these are brilliant machines. I can't say enough 
um, about those. They're, they're great. You know, they took us flipping miles. <laughs> um, uh, and the thing, the thing with it is the weight plants that thing really nicely. So the tire and the weight combined just plants the thing. And it's with this, and it's a 20 inch. And with this, you know, it's not a 22, which is what this is, if you're not sure what the monster is, this is a 20. So it's packed into and condensed down into a frame this size. And so it just sat really well on the road and the gravel. And I've been out in the rain a little bit. It's been raining on and off. There was no slipping. There was no jumping. Um, and in terms of, I intentionally rode over some sticks lying on these trails and things. Some of them I didn't even feel. Some of them it obliterated as it went through them. Um, and, so, and so that, I thought that might be a point of contention. The only thing you could say is the road noise is really loud. Um, which I'll put a video up now of the road noise. So you can tell it's loud, but you know what? It's a flipping cool sound when you're running through town and people hear that coming and they look around and they see this Mad Max style thing. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet feeling to be fair. I, I haven't found anything that I can really criticize apart from the trolley handle but i can kind of understand where they're going with it is that it's a trolley handle to push it along they don't actually want you lifting off this so there's no as i said earlier there's no real point here if i can get this to come up there's no real point here where it's like at that in that mode where you can grab it and carry it and pick it up but because it's so heavy i don't think they want you to i think they want you to use it as a pushing forward and back thing you shouldn't definitely if you get one of these don't be using this to lift up the machine because you're going to wreck that in no, no time because it's central and it's so heavy you'll be banging it about as you're carrying it. it's going to be putting all sorts of different tensions on different areas where it shouldn't be it's designed for pushing and pulling backwards and forwards so you're forced to carry it like this if you try and carry it at the front you can but obviously it dips down to the center point of where the weight is so it's really awkward to carry so my really up being a completely up front straight away and then we get on with the rest of the stuff about this wheel the only gripe i could have excluding the first two price and weight because you know those things before you buy it is as a commuting tool if you're using the underground a lot and if there's loads of steps to carry it all up and if it's really hustling bustling where you live and no one ain't got time for people stood around messing about with things and they're pushing you out of the way if you live in that environment and it's pressurized this will be a nightmare so having to pick the thing up especially if you're wearing a suit or something pick the thing up and carry it around forget that if you live a place with no lift access and your 12th floor, forget it. Uh, unless you're built like this, um, just forget it. It's not going to be any good. If you're purely traveling from A to B and you leave your front door and then you ride into your office or wherever and you don't have to carry it up 15 flights of stairs, this is amazing. So in every other respect, it's amazing. I genuinely struggled to just be so positive and, and I thought, what am I overlooking? What am I overlooking here? There's got to be something. And I've done 155 kilometers on it now. Um, and it hasn't, uh, just honestly, I'm almost lost for words. The battery, you set out and you're fully charged. That first bar, you don't lose that for quite a while. And you're looking down. And that's another thing, you can look down. But you look down, you see the battery readout. And you're like, oh, I hasn't lost a bar yet. I've done 10 miles. Okay. And so I lost the first bar at 13 miles. Um, they don't all equal 13 miles, by the way. So it, reading battery percentage is not a straightforward calculation. Anyone that owns an electric car will understand that. So it varies massively. So your first bar, my first bar, just happened to be 13 miles. Now, if I set off at home and went uphill immediately, obviously that first bar is going to vary massively. It might be five if you're going straight up a steep hill. So you've got to understand that. It's not all, you can't just look at it and go, oh, that's 13 miles, that's 13 miles, and that's 13 miles. There's eight bars on there. They're not all going to equal the same amount. So you can't really calculate your journey. You just sort of have to do the range test and then know, divide it up by those bars. And that's kind of how you're going to get your average um, amount of miles per bar. So how far did I go per charge? Is this a 128 mile machine?
range I got was 63 miles. Now that is significantly a drift of the 128 miles, you may say to yourself, yes it is. But the 120 was with a 70, I think it's a 70 or 75 kilogram rider at an average speed of 21 miles an hour, I think, and it's on flat. So what I've done is I've gone 40 kilometers an hour pretty much most of the way over the range test, over that mileage. Um, the only times I haven't is when I'm hitting really steep hills. So obviously that's brought the speed down, but it's brought the battery drain down or up um, as well, because obviously I'm going to just put more energy in, using more energy, consuming more energy. So my journey essentially was approximately 40 kilometers an hour. I don't usually work in kilometers an hour, I use miles, but 40 kilometers an hour for almost that entire journey. So the entire range test was more or less at that speed. When it wasn't at that speed, it's because I was going up a steep hill. And so the speed dropped. But of course, my battery consumption has increased significantly due to the amount of extra energy it takes to take the, that weight of the wheel and me up a steep hill. So it's more or less on average, it's about 40 kilometers an hour. Now I set the tilt back and the first alarm, which you can do all through here to 43. So I knew when I was at that upper end and I actually managed to rip most of the time without the alarm going off because you kind of know, you can sense how fast you're going. So I set it at that and I went 20, basically 25, almost that entire time. Now with my kit on, I'm clocking on for 90 kilograms. So I sit at around about the 85 kilogram mark, but with all my Alpine stars, trousers, etc., I'm I'm basically at 90 kilograms. So there's two differences from the stated range. So I don't think they're trying to pull a fast one. I think what they're actually doing is accurately reporting what it could do. So if we had a 70 kilogram rider around and it was wanted to dedicate an entire day and a bit to try and finish off a range test, you you could go out and do that test. Will people get 100 miles? Yes, they will. What are we going to report back? We're going to report back what we always do, which is the worst case scenario. So basically, it's a 65, 65 mile machine is essentially what it is. So 65 miles for an 85 kilogram rider. I was 90, don't forget, and I was going faster than you usually would, most likely. So that's a stonking amount. Do I think um, I could get 100 miles out of this? Yes, I'm pretty sure I could. I think if I went 18 miles an hour average speed and wasn't wearing five kilograms of my kit approximately, I think I could push that out of there. Could I be bothered to go and do another range test at 18 miles? No, I'm not going to do that because your time is the most valuable resource you've got. I am not going to do another range test to try and eke out because then you, you can you can don't have to stop there at 18 miles an hour, do you? Because I wonder what happened if you went 15, then obviously you can get more miles. Worst case scenario is the best way of reporting this stuff. There will be people out there have these wheels and go, Ian, what are you on about? You know, 65 miles, I'm getting 110 out of mine. So, like, okay, fair enough. But they might be in a hot climate. So the hotter the climate, well, not the better, but 21 degrees and above is optimum for these batteries. And they might be a lighter rider. They might ride on flat. They might have a different tire pressure, etc., etc. So that's what we got is basically it's a 65 mile machine at that speed. So I think you can probably take that as your worst case scenario. You're going to get 65 miles out of this machine unless you're heavier. So that's the only time you can drop that down if you weigh more than 90 kgs and you're doing the same terrain as us in the same temperatures at the same speeds, then you'll get worse. Hope that covers that off and makes it clear. The reason I spent a bit of time on that is because one of the biggest points of this wheel of course is this 100 mile wheel, which as I've just explained. So with the look down display, as I'll call it, uh, you've got a display sat here, which you just have to look and glance at. He's asking how much battery he's, he's got left. Doesn't know, because he hasn't got a panel. Yeah. How much battery you got, Mario? Mm, I don't look, know. I, I got this. There's how much I got. And you know what you're doing. You know where your battery is, you know where your speed is. And from this display, you can adjust your alarms, your tilt back, the calibration of the foot plates. Um, yeah, you can turn lights on, lights off. Pretty impressive, if I'm honest. Just a quick glance down. No, get your phone in your pocket, and especially if you've got waterproofs on, things like that, you're like, click, 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 click. Come on, get in your pocket. You've got gloves on, so the phone don't work. Without, if you've got gloves that are a bit weird like mine, um, take them off, and then you're like, come on, log in, and then you did it, and your head's down all this time, looking at this phone, when you can just go like that, and look up again. 
So all the adjustments can be made on here. At this point of filming, there is no app. Darkness Bot, though, will apparently cater for this at some point. There's a Bluetooth module built into here. So it is app compatible, essentially, once one's built or one's allowing the access to this. In the moment, it says invalid vehicle or something if you try and connect to it. But they have said that Darkness Bot are working on getting that connected up and working. So, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I suppose my only other thing would be that it'd be nice to see battery percentage as a percentage rather than battery bars. So you've got some idea of where that thinks the percentage of the battery is at that any given moment. That would be quite nice to see on this screen as well. Or swap out the bars for percentage instead. Uh, if, if there is a way of doing that, let me know. I haven't come across it. That would be quite good, maybe in the future. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the only thing I would say about that. At the same time where this LCD display is, the alarm is here. So is, there's no built-in speakers, so you might say, oh, I really, really want to blare some music out. You're going to be disappointed here because there are no inbuilt speakers, apart from a board speaker, as I call it, so it's onto the board or near the board, little white speaker, essentially, not designed for outputting high-quality audio. But where it's positioned, and this is the thing, when you ride one of these any, for any length of time, remember the golden rule, ride a wheel for 50 miles until you can comment on it. You're not authorised to say anything on a wheel until you've ridden it 50 miles, unless at point 10 of a mile, it cuts out and slams your face into the ground for no other reason than it is faulty. Um, so ride 50 miles, and that's one of the things you start to discover, these little things when you start reflecting on what you're stood on and riding. With my helmet on, full face helmet, riding at 40 kilometres an hour, the wind hits the edge of the helmet, makes a whistling noise. Very difficult on a lot of wheels to hear the beep. It sat right there and it pushes that sound up. You can't miss it. So even in winds, high winds as I'm riding in, unmistakable. It's, I smirked when I heard that. I thought, they've thought about it. And there's a lot they have thought about here. And it's just like, yes, they've actually thought about stuff. One gripe I could mention, there's no mug guard. So this needs a mug guard. It definitely needs a mug guard. I mean, we've got dust all at the back here. Yeah, yeah, so they've got port covers on and things like that. That's great. But you've got to touch that area when you go and plug in at work or whatever. It's better just to have a mug guard, isn't it? I mean, come on, put a mug guard on stuff. Throw one in the box. Don't fit it then. Okay, don't fit it. Put it in the box so we can then bolt it on. And then I'm going to rant about that mug guard because it's the only thing I can find to rant about. So fl flipping mug guard on. What is the matter with people? Why aren't they putting mug guards on these things? Look at them. They let the whole wheel down because they haven't put a mug guard on it. That's all I've got, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, so mug guard fitted. The opportunities to fit mug guards on this are vast because you've got this frame that goes around it. Uh, the opportunities for swapping this frame out for some other type of metal and some other type of material of the same style, endless. The opportunities for taking these side panels off, dipping them, hydro dipping them, spraying them, maybe you want olive drab, something like that, endless. Yeah, so the all the screws around here are recessed into brass fittings, so they're solid fittings. They're not into plastic. That's another thing that I looked for when I was taking this off. I was like, right, are they into plastic or not? And they weren't. The little touch has been put there which has been learned over time. Foot plates, <laughs> massive foot plates, super grippy. Um, there is a tiny little bit of wear on my toe area on the foot plate, only slightly. We will see how that goes over time. That is the same for anybody else that puts this sort of material on. But this material is incredibly sharp and grippy. So as it is at the moment, that's spot on. In terms of acceleration, so torque, 20 inch wheel. It is what it is. It feels no less torque than anything else and it actually kicks out quite a lot of power. I've had no issues under hard braking. One of the first things I tested was to accelerate fairly hard. I'm not leaning forward like Michael Jackson but I am pushing forward to get up to speed up to what I set it to. I've had no issues whatsoever. Slamming the brakes on, lovely and solid. Again that mass that it's got there and that big tyre, just lovely. And you can hear this tyre gripping in. I think Part of the balloony field soft ride that it's got over bumps, I mean, don't get me wrong, some, it's got no suspension, so some bumps will, will whip up through, but a lot of it's taken out through this tyre, and I think it's because it's a blocky off-road tyre, so it's, it's almost like the trials bike. I've got electric trials bike, no kids electric trials bike. Very similar tyre to that. And there's, there's a gap here, and that allows these to flex, and so you get that movement on these. But going into what I expected, going into a corner, I thought you get a bit of wee up going on. You know the wee ups? Yeah, it's a technical term. 
But you go in here and you're rolling over these, they, they can fold over slightly and you get a bit of movement, which is only tiny, but it feels a lot when you travel up through your body and you're up here and you feel it. This doesn't do that. And I was amazed that when I, the first crawl I rolled into at speed, I was like, it's amazing. It's amazing. I was like, come on, there's got to be something that I can grab hold of and say, look, you've got the pros and the cons. And the only cons are price and weight and a mug guard. Um, so yeah, that tire makes it. It would be interesting to see what happens if you put a road tire on. I've got no desire to strip this thing down and put a road tire on it because it rides so well. It would only be to try and make the ride worse and I can't be bothered with that. Um, so yeah, that's lovely. Really, really nice. To summarize, the price is going to push some people out of the ability to be able to even reach to this because it, it is very expensive. It's explainable a lot by the fact that the batteries are just so huge, 3,200 watt hours. Just go and look at the price of battery banks with that sort of capacity for storing energy. So the price is one thing and portability is the other. So that's going to be the two big points. Again, if you're looking to commute and you're going up multiple sets of stairs multiple times a day, honestly, don't spend your money on this because you're probably going to be really peed off on your first day because it's so hard to handle. But if you can avoid those routes and not have to go through those things, perhaps this wheel will open up because of its range, will open up the possibility of not even going on the tube. You can think of it that way. I mean, there's always positive slants you can put on stuff. Perhaps you don't need to. Perhaps you can just travel overland. Um, so that's a possibility. Price still remain, might remain an issue. I mean, for this sort of money, you can more or less get a good, decent car with a boot and five seats and it'll keep you dry in the rain, things like that. So it is expensive, but it still remains right at this point. I'm going to say the best wheel I've ever ridden. Yeah. Scary, isn't it? There won't be many of those moments. Um, knocking this off its perch, and by the way, it's really easy to knock off the stand. Um, it's going to be really difficult. I can't think what you would do to trump this. Uh, aside from have something that feels and rides exactly the same that does 100 miles or, or any more miles than this does. Um, yeah, interesting. So perhaps the introduction suspension on this would make a difference or it might change the rod style so it's not quite so good. Uh, don't know, that's all up in the air. But at the moment, all I can do is on this timeline, to look at the date of this video, I am massively impressed. I just can't say it enough with what they've done here. And I just really hope they knuckle down and stay fixed on the quality control and don't try and push loads of different models out on a production line, trying to shift out as many to compete with the competition that they've got currently. Because if they just stuck with this format, ensured over the next six months, 12 months, that this is solid and reliable, they're onto a really, really good thing. Um, some people have got to do some catching up on this. My, so my, what might be my future concerns? So I thought perhaps let's bring theoretical future occurrences in, because I can't really say anything to bring some nice balance to the whole thing like I usually like to do. I'm wondering, now this is just only wondering, what will happen with all that weight hung on that axle. Now, don't write in the comments, that, oh yeah, it's got a nice big thick axle, etc. I'm not just saying that. It's a theoretical discussion about the fact that you've got 35 kilograms, slightly less, because it's sat on the motor for some of that. You've got a lot of weight hanging over that axle with me on top as well. Will that have any adverse effects over time? We'll leave that as a question mark. But the brilliant thing is, and that's kind of why I've introduced that theoretical question, because Speedy Feet, we do, at great cost, it has to be said, we do the unboxing, the 250 kilometer, uh, sorry, we do the unboxing and the range test, then we do a 250 kilometer review, then we do a 650 kilometer review, and then we do a thousand. The speed now with wheels coming out of this, it's just crazy, isn't it? The wheels coming out with 3,200 watt hours makes it very difficult to do the first video because we've currently got two wheels that have just come out new. We've got this one, so it was like a full day dedicated trying to get that amount of mileage in whilst the weather's good um, and enjoyable to ride in. Trying to stack that in a single day and then also take notes down and try and get that done. So we've managed to do that in a day, but riding these wheels to their maximum, of course, 
where we are now, you'll soon get into the 250. So the other videos should come in quick succession, basically, with something this size. It can go so far that, yeah, as long as you stick to it um, and stay on this one wheel. I'm testing like four wheels at the moment. So I'll try and stay on this one um, as much as possible, as much as I can. At this point, it's looking extremely positive. We're at 155 kilometers in. Any issues that were going to arise from any manufacturing defects should essentially be there. Remember, though, that we had this on the 1,000 miler. Remember that the more miles you do, it is actually wearing the machine down. It's not like you're like, oh, we've done 50 miles on this. It's bound to be fine. Because actually all the components are getting older and older and older, and they're wearing out the further you go. So it's easy to get into the full sense of security. You're like, well, I mean, I've done the first 50 miles. It's bound to be fine from now on out. Um, so the more you ride it, the more it's wearing out. But all the wheels we've had, we haven't had any failures across the 1,000 kilometers. So if I get an issue with this, obviously you can report back and go, oh, wow, I've got broken arms. Um, or go got to a thousand kilometer, no problem at all. It's been an absolute trooper. If it remains the same, it will be a glorious thousand kilometers. If you've got any questions at all that you want to ask about this wheel, ask in the comments below. Also, check out www.speedyfeet.co.uk. Obviously, if you can buy through us, that would be brilliant. Support the channel and support what we're doing here. And go and purchase there. We've got them up for pre order at the time of filming this video. And a 250 kilometer video review is going to be a week's time. As long as I can find the time to actually edit it and produce the video in a weird time at the moment with this lockdown. Um, so, yeah, I hope that has been insightful. The only other thing, before I go, this here, this top control panel, it keeps popping back up again. So I stick it back down and it pops up. But I thought, hmm, that would get rain underneath. When you lift it up and have a look, it's basically a big plastic sheet underneath it. So this is almost like just a little thing. It's got little rubber buttons underneath. Um, but I keep sticking that back down and the edges keep curling back up. So they could do something with that, could sort that out. I mean, come on guys, mud guard and so stick that down a bit better. Because I have to keep going around, sticking it down. Oh, oh, should I pull this off? Look at it. Mm. Okay, let's pull it off. Please like this video, massively important that you like this video. Share it as far and wide as you possibly can. Go and check out electricpeople.org. Join in there. Uh, we pay a fee to keep that site going each month. It's designed for the community. Those that aren't on Facebook can join with those that are. Get together, share your photos, your videos and stuff like that. It's not as good as Facebook in terms of the way it's structured and things, but it's the best we can do. Um, after all, we haven't quite got the budget that Facebook's got. Uh, put that together, so go and share your stuff on there. Usually some sneak peeks and stuff that goes on there. Things like this come in and then we post it up. Um, there's loads of other riders on there that have got all sorts of stories to share and things like that. So go and check that out. Um, go and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, on our Facebook page, all those sorts of things. Uh, you can get a hoodie if you go to the merch section on speedyfeet.co.uk. So, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Can't believe it.